I am back to talk about travel pads. So my story with travel pads starts when I had to move states due to work and into a new place where I wouldn't have enough room to set up my permanent arcade pad setup. I played an arcade pad for a few years. It's a great experience, but simply didn't have room to set it up. I needed something that I could set up and tear down before and after every session. So as a result, I put together this crappy wood pad at the end of 2020. Really simple arcade center panel stolen from my pad. Just really crappy oriented strand board base. It leaked in the garage that I currently play in, so the wood warped all the time. I had to move the panels around. Huge pain. Still passed a 17 on it, and actually did my ECS 9.5 raw output and marathon split on it, so did the job. Um, but like I said, kind of sucks um and i tried to take it traveling so i have to travel quite a bit across the country due to work and it actually barely fits diagonally in my carry-on suitcase but some of the sharp edges were causing some damage and i never never travel consistently with it i tried putting these cardboard protectors to keep it from causing damage but didn't end up working super duper well and consequently never travel consistently with it so Last year, I ended up putting together my main pad. This is a metal travel pad. This one, I uh, already made a video on it. It uses extruded aluminum, and it's much more resistant to warping than the other pad. It's just a much nicer playing experience still. You know, easily accessible via the hinges. Lights turn on. They're configurable via the web UI. Super nice. Hinges have oxidized a bit, but overall, it's uh, treated me extremely well tried to travel with this one too um unfortunately it actually has to be partially disassembled um to fit in my suitcase you got to remove the base plate and some of the side plates um but both times i've traveled with it or once i traveled with it both airports i was in they <laughs> actually was um inspected by the tsa so they had to unpack my entire suitcase dig it out and bottom i had to explain what it was and why I was traveling with it and it was a massive pain so I'm never planning on traveling with this again. Still gonna use it as my main playing pad. Jeez, uh, that guy's heavy. So the motivation behind this is the third pad I built. I saw a post on Stamina Nation Discord a while back by Dom ITG. Check him out if you haven't seen him already. Suggesting you could use IKEA cutting boards as material for a travel pad. And I thought to myself, man, why not? They're high density polyethylene, same as what I use for the base of my metal pad, shouldn't really warp like wood, and ultimately ended up being the stupidest thing I've ever done. Here's the IKEA travel pad. It measures only 13.5 inches this direction, 16.5 inches this direction, barely has any metal, shouldn't set off any detectors, gonna be testing that pretty soon. Uses $3 IKEA cutting boards, a total of five of them, and uses 3D printed hinges um, to access the FSRs underneath. So like the other two, it is an FSR pad, and it works. I've only played on it for part of one session today. I've passed an ITG 13, couple other songs. Never plan on using this as a full-time pad, um, but it, does work and I thought it was novel enough to share with y'all. I started by using computer-aided design to design the pad. This allowed me to rapidly experiment with different length, width, and height dimensions, ultimately settling on 16 inches in length, 13.5 inches in width, and about 0 0.85 uh, inches in height. I borrowed a planer from my local tool share and planed each of the cutting boards to about 6 to 7 millimeters in thickness in order to remove the bumpy surface finish. Next I used the CAD dimensions to mark each of the places that I wanted to cut and cut each of the panels using a miter saw. Since these are HDPE cutting boards. They cut really easily, although they did create quite a bit of mess. I'd highly recommend making sure that each panel is firmly clamped down before cutting. On all my travel pads, the panels are secured to the base using hinges. This allows the FSRs and modding to be easily accessed. I went through about 11 revisions of hinge on this project before getting one that fit in the proper size and had the correct hole tolerances. I printed these hinges on a Voxel Lab Aquila using PLA filament and 100% infill. 
The hinges were relatively easy to assemble. I used these steel roll pins that I got from a local supplier. Simply assembled the top and bottom piece, stuck the roll pin across. It was a loose press fit on either side and a clearance fit through the um, top portion. Made sure it was flush and then, as you can see, the hinge will just lift up and down if you pull on it. I then repeated this process for the rest of the hinges using a total of eight to secure all four panels down two hinges per panel. Every thread on this project uses these brass heat set inserts. Um, the installation process is pretty simple. You um, put the insert inside of a straight hole and then you get a soldering iron put inside the insert. The insert heats up really quickly, um, softens the plastic around it, and then you simply flip the piece upside down, press it, and make sure it's flush. And the nice thing about these inserts is that they were four millimeters and I could get them to fit on either the PLA printed parts or on the HDPE um, panels and base plates that I was using for the rest of the pad. This way I could use M4 inserts everywhere on the pad. Final hardware assembly is pretty simple. Start by getting the two base plates, lay those out next to each other, and then get the two mid-level plates and lay those on top. These plates secure the two base plates next to each other. Each of the mid-level plates uh, secures in place using eight flathead M4 screws. Once those are in place, then get the two um, center panel plates and secure those to the mid-level plates using four M4 screws. Once the rest of the pad is assembled, then get each of the um, up, down, left, and right panels and secure each of those to the base plates themselves using four M4 screws. Once that's done, make sure that each of the um, side panels move up and down smoothly, that there's no interference, and if necessary, remove them, sand them down to adjust. And with that, final hardware assembly should be complete. I'm going to gloss over this portion of the project because there's a lot of better electronics guides out there, but you'll want to secure each of the four sensitive resistors in place to the base plate um, using some sort of taper adhesive and then run the appropriate wires from each of the FSRs to the microcontroller. I used an Arduino Pro Micro, Pro Micro located in the top left and ultimately used four one kilo ohm resistors in the fixed um, portion of the voltage dividers, tying them directly to ground. I would highly recommend using Sujit's software to um, adjust the thresholds on these FSRs. So, does it work? The answer actually was yes. It fits nicely into the bottom of my suitcase without any sort of disassembly or modification, and it um, was not triggered by the TSA at any of the airports I've been to so far. I have a really sketchy setup <laughs> in one of the hotels I stayed up. Um, passed at least a 14 there. I also passed a, another couple of 14s at home as well. Um, it's not the best pad I've ever played on. The panels are a little bit wobbly. I can think of some ways to fix it, but ultimately it does the job that I want it to. So it was a surprising success in my book. So how much did it cost me? Ultimately, I used five cutting boards at $3 a piece for about $15 in just the raw HDPE. Spent an approximated 63 cents on filament. The hinges are pretty light. Uh, roll pins were about $2 from a local supplier. FSRs were knockoffs from eBay, plus some connectors I got from DigiKey for like $10 total. Spent about $4 on screws and about $5.5 on the heat set inserts. I got the Arduino as a pack of four for $20, so about $5 a piece. And all in all, I spent around $42.5 for this whole project. I had some of the wire, heat shrink tubing, USB cable, and stuff lying around, um, but those would probably only add incrementally to the cost. Ultimately, I hope that no one goes out and builds a carbon copy of this pad, even though I do have the GitHub with the um, G-code and CAD files linked below. 
Um, there's quite a few improvements I could think of to make, such as improving the rigidity of the panels and improving the strength of the hinges and improving the surface finish on the center panel so it's easier to slide on. But I'm hoping that this gives some good ideas and hopefully encouragement to others who want to build travel paths to go out and do it yourself. Thanks for watching.